Very good. And I uh, clicked the live thing. So we're on live now. Let's do this it. This is Hannibal here from thehannibaltv.com with none other than the ECW original, one half of the gangsters with New Jack. He was in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, WCW, WWE. Mustafa with a nice beard going tonight. Uh, thank you, man. Good to be good. Hey, it's good for the people to have me here, man. I, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy the people. It's nothing like wrestling fans. I'm gonna tell you that. Yeah, they're uh, they're a unique brand of people, aren't they? Oh okay, man, you can't beat them. I, I, I I've been around. Uh, I was hanging around one of the football players that played for the 49ers, right? And um, uh, I, I'm trying to remember his name, right? Armstead. Armstead. He, he's number 91. Played for, and we was at, at the barber shop one day, and. Uh, they were talking to him, you know, and the kids were real happy to see him. And then I told them, that they said, uh, uh, well, what's your name? I said, Mustafa. I said, what are you doing? I just told them, I said, you know, a, a pro wrestler. You're a pro wrestler? And they just went off. I was like, okay. I said, this is the different thing right here. You know, uh, so it was cool. It was cool the way that they went off. Yeah, I actually just watched rewatched the uh, the New Jack Dark Side of the Ring that, that you were in. Yes. Uh, so because the last time I talked to you, it wasn't fresh in my mind, but this time it was. <laughs> did Did you get new fans in recent years um, through YouTube becoming so popular with the old matches on there and the Dark Side of the Ring? Do you find new people reaching out to you? Yeah, I, it's the it's it's actually the younger crowd, the uh, the real the little kids, you know, uh, seven eight years old, uh, uh, reaching out, and uh, you know uh, they don't use discretion. You know that some of the parents don't use discretion. They have, have them watch everything with them, you know, half the time. So I'm pretty sure they had them watch that uh, that that episode of the dark side. Um, you know, the the thing that uh, I always wanted to say was, uh, me and New Jack were real brothers. And all the uh, shoot interviews you hear about him uh, from everything, uh, <laughs> like I said, I had it coming a lot of it because, uh, you know, I, I was trying to do my thing too. And uh, we, we, we would clash at times, but that, that's because we were real brothers. So that's why. And, but we, but we love, but he, but I loved him though. You know what I'm saying? I loved him like a, a brother, man. And uh, it was good people. And after he would do a shoot interview all the time, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, I might've said this before, but, uh, we would do a shoot. Uh, he would cuss me out on the shoot interview, and then he'd call me two days later. Hey, we got a booking, man. Uh, uh, make sure you you be there uh, so we, we can do this thing. I said, all right, cool. <laughs> and that's how we was all the time, you know. So. Yeah, whatever gets the people talking, why not? Right. You know. When was your last match, anyways? Oh, I had one Sunday. This past Sunday, well, a week ago. Really? Yeah, I had one a week ago. Um, what, what I did, you know, I, I still uh, exercise uh, uh, extremely at times, and uh, you know, uh, I, I figured I'm I'm trying to do like Luthez. I'm trying to wrestle all the way up to 70, 80 years old or something. Uh, uh, if I don't, I'm still gonna be a manager, so I'm never gonna quit wrestling. It's just uh, it's just too much fun to it, and you meet so many good people. Uh, some bad people too, but it, it still, it keeps your blood boiling in the right way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's there's definitely a percentage of bad people, uh, especially on the independent scene. Well, that's because they don't see the money. You know, they don't they don't see the money as a work together and and and, and make money. Uh, we have this clash out here in uh, Cali too, a lot of times and. These, these guys don't understand that uh, at one time, these territories are so hot uh, out here. You know, I'm going back now. I'm going back with Ray Stevens and uh, Nick Bonkwickle and these guys like that. And uh, shoot, they, they, they was hot territories. And then some of, these, some of these guys don't know the history of how hot it was out here in Cali. Oh, yeah. The the San Francisco territory where, where Billy Graham wrestled too and, and Pat Patterson was a big star. And then the L.A. territory at the Olympic. Right. Oh, those were huge. Two was, territories I, in one I, state. Uh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say two big territories in one state. That that was, Those yeah. were great days. 
Two said it was a uh, Roddy Piper, the Guerrero brothers. Uh, uh, they said Red Bastine. Uh, man, I do, I do, I do my history out here. Uh, you know, though, I'm glad that I was raised up on Mid Atlantic back in North Carolina, though. Uh, Mid Atlantic was uh, more technical, but you know, like I said before, um, when you when you running these things, you know, like a a, a, a talent that you are, Hannibal, you know, it's uh, people. Uh, they just love to be misunderstand misunderstanding about things. You know, they don't see the money side of it, and uh, they uh, got this personal thing, thinking that uh, it's, it's it's about businesses and it's about promoting. It's about the, the booking, and they get themselves so caught up in it that next thing you know, it, but they out of there. They out of there. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I think I would have preferred the the ECW days, even though the pay wasn't the greatest. Right, I would have fit in better back then. I don't, I don't really think I fit in uh, today's wrestling. But good for the people that are making a, sh a shitload of money. Well, you, you definitely would have been open arms uh, in uh, uh, ECW, man, because it was a party, man. We 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 partied uh, before we got to the to, to the, the the arena. We partied at the arena. We partied after the arena. Uh, the uh, uh, and, you know, think about it. I was telling people all the time. I stayed under the influence. You know, saying I was uh, drunk all the time and I was high. But I go to the gym at least three, four times a day, or I would work out at the at, at the hotel room or something. You know, uh, but I was going by. But I was going to drink my, uh, my my drinks and I was going to do my drugs. You know, so. <laughs> But uh, but I made sure that uh, I wasn't so uh, bad off. I couldn't protect the guys I was working with, though. You know. Yeah, well, I could imagine some of the drugs would actually help your workouts. Well, yeah, you know, it, it, it's funny too because, like, uh, at, at that time, um, you know, you 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 hit something where you know I ain't gonna <laughs> break it up on, but you know, you hit something, and. Uh, you know, uh, oh, I gotta go to the gym, man. I gotta, I gotta hit it, man, because we, we got three hours left before we go to the arena. So I go to there, and then when I get to the arena, I do a, a, another full uh, Hindu squats and all this other stuff. And uh, next thing you know, here come uh, 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 one of the guys, bring, hey, man, I got a joint. You want to hit hit this joint? Oh, yeah, let's hit it. You know, <laughs> and then we go out to the ring, you know, and do our thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, you, you don't see that quite as often nowadays. With but it's a different breed of wrestlers, and I guess it's good in some ways because they're gonna live longer. But you don't have the crazy personalities anymore. Like, would Roddy Piper have lasted in, to, in today's world of wrestling with, yeah, with but, his party? You know, and the way the way our language was, you know, uh, uh, you know, we was uh, definitely. Uh, Man, it was politically not correct uh, for today's TV. And the, this this woke thing that's going on, they're so sensitive now. It wouldn't have worked back then. Yeah, I mean, I am i don't know if you heard about the thing with with Steiner. I mean, I'm, I'm neutral towards it. Whatever happened, I, I don't know if anything happened at WrestleCon. But I, did, I don't know if you heard that story. But I, it didn't seem like they stood up for themselves at the WrestleCon. They waited till they got on their computers. Well, they're afraid of the, the, the bags, man. You know they they're making this money, and uh, if you get banned from if you get banned from some of the things, some of their income, you know, uh, deep down inside, they don't want to want to tell you that that's 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 a main part of their income. Uh, don't get me wrong, they uh, they smart enough. Some of them smart enough to run other businesses and things like that, but they know that. This is uh, easy money, man. Uh, uh, but if you got these views about certain things, instead of just go and do, you know, I always said I'm not trying to preach to nobody, but just go in there and handle your business, man, and uh, let them do all that other stuff because some of the other stuff don't make no sense. If it ain't making no money, it don't make no sense to me to be arguing about it anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that's true. There's a fan on here that wants to know who the stiffest wrestler you've ever been in the ring with. Oh, I think uh, I think somehow your your mic got cut off. Damn it! Ah, okay. Let's try this again. 
Let's see if we can get this fixed. Sorry, guys. We'll uh, we'll come back to this. His mic, his mic got cut off. Uh, of course, uh, New Jack's tag team partner here, Mustafa. Great guy. Let's try this again. Uh, there's there's something wrong with this. Worst case, I'll I'll call him and put him on speaker. If that doesn't happen, he he's uh, I guess no. Oh, there it is. Okay, I hear you again now. So good, good. Oh, man, I tell you, the, the newer the phones get, the you remember when we had I had that old Droid back in the day, and I didn't have any of these problems like I do with this, this new iPhone. I love. I mean, it's a cool yeah. phone, man. But good lord, man. Yeah, there. I don't even know anything that's on mine really, other than the basic stuff. <laughs> I know, man. It's a trip. Right. But, but so someone what, wanted to know who the stiffest was before that cut out. Right. What were you saying before uh, after that? Uh, like who your stiffest uh, opponent was. Well, the the you know, like I said, uh, I, I had a few guys, but Stan Hansen was uh, the stiffest I ever went against. Uh, but, you know, I came from a background. I, I had a boxing background. Um uh, and, and things. So when I got hit, I I thought it hell. I thought it was normal, you know, uh, to get hit like that. So uh, I didn't I didn't have no problem with it getting kicked in. You know, you get kicked in the head, and uh, you can feel it. Boom! It, it clothesline you. Uh, uh, you know, real stiff and all that stuff, man. And I didn't I didn't take it personal or nothing. I thought that's, that's how I go, man. You know. That's what I actually thought too when I started wrestling. I didn't realize they were roughing me up right. until after I'd been wrestling for a while and be like, "Oh, they were they were actually stiffing me." Right. They were trying to see. They, they was trying to give us uh, to see if we could take it and uh, not be a big baby about it. You know what I'm saying? Like some guys do. Yeah, it's uh, it's good that they used to have that because it weeded out. Uh, different people but it's a different business now oh you can God. get you can get a contract without even wrestling they're actually recruiting people in wwe now that haven't had any experience they're actually looking for those types now well the the they feel like they can start them off from the uh, the bottom uh meaning uh not have any uh, d uh any discretions any problems uh, bad habits or anything and they feel like but see what they don't understand is you have to do the trial and error thing too uh and, and so when when you get out there you understand okay this works and oh that's not gonna work in this match uh yeah that's this will work and that's not gonna work and uh unfortunately the, the it had to be some great teachers they got down there that can uh or you know some people that are real big fans that watched it on TV and, and got an idea of uh, how it used to be. Uh, and maybe they can uh, work it out like that. But, oh, man, you, you when you have a person that hasn't watched it at all or never done it before, oh, man, that, that's real tough, you know? Yeah, and they might not stick around once they get famous because they haven't paid their, their dues they just get a contract from training and they don't love wrestling or anything. They'll, they'll just leave. But there's so far really from the people they've trained with from scratch, there hasn't been, Oh, we lost him again. But let's hope he's back. <laughs> let's hope he's back. But, uh, Oh, there he is. Okay. Here we go. He works. But, but, yeah, uh, there's uh, another fan question on here. They want to know some of your favorite wrestlers growing up. I remember last time you were saying Wahoo was one of them. Yeah, Wahoo McDaniels, uh, Johnny Valentine, uh, Ernie Ladd. Uh, I, and, and, of course, I was an Anderson brother fan, uh, the way they uh, tagged. And that's why, uh, you know, I had gotten the tag. And, uh, you know, the, wanted to tag with New Jack. Uh, and everything, and uh, you know, uh, uh, and we did very, we did very well. I thought uh, to a certain extent. 
you know, uh, meaning to a certain extent was you can only go as far as um, uh, the, the, the promoter sometime because uh, our reputation, you know. Someone on, on here wants to know how mentally draining was it to wrestle in Smoky Mountain? Really, I'm be honest with you. I had so much fun uh, wrestling because, like I said before, we party, man. You know, we <laughs> we party. We stayed drunk, uh, 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 hitting uh, hitting uh, different bars. Uh, then we hit the road. I was a great night driver. You know, at nighttime uh, uh, during the day, I'm not uh, man. It's kind of rough during the day driving. But nighttime, uh, get a little at that time, get a little look at me, some bruise and everything like that. It was on and cracking. I could drive all night. Now, I I remember the last interview. You said you actually went completely sober off of everything when you were forty two. Was that because you had a family, or was there? Yeah, a yeah I married my I married my wife. My wife uh, I loved her so much. I couldn't have brought them. I, I I couldn't have them habits like that, man, coming in. So I had to, uh, you know, I, I loved her so much. So I had to, I just gave, you know, gave it up, man. Uh, but it wasn't easy now. I did I did cold turkey. I didn't go to no, uh, I'm not trying to brag them. I didn't go to no uh, rehab centers. I didn't go to anything. I did cold turkey. Uh, she, she didn't even know that I had to, uh, you know, was real bad off. Uh, I used to drink water and, uh, <laughs> and just uh, uh, read this Bible all the time just drink some water did you have any health problems from drinking like that or did you did you stop before the health problems started to pop up well the the workouts man it it was unbelievable that that saved me you know uh uh, doing all those workouts when i was getting high and drunk all the time um uh, we would uh, from from the old wwf to wcw days I would still go out in the back, uh, in the dressing room somewhere, uh, hit out some uh, squats, uh, do my push-ups and my sit-ups, and uh, go hide somewhere. I would hide anywhere to uh, get my workouts in. And then, you know, I just, uh, uh, you know, the grace of God, uh, it didn't. I didn't tear myself up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that that's great. You look you look very healthy. There's a few fans on here that have commented that. Tom Pritchard uh, does a podcast on this channel. Did you have much interaction with him in Smoky Mountain? Well, we just did the thing with the heavenly bodies, uh, and uh, and that was that was it. Uh, I never, um, uh, you know, I, I kind of get out of people's business, man. I only person that I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Only person uh, uh, I got some trust with it, it is you. You know, when we do uh, interviews, because. I always liked your personality. Uh, I always used to hear people say, well, you know, Hannibal, I said, man, let me find out. You know what I'm saying? So I thought, hey, man, I think you're cool. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, that's what I wanted to uh, do is just find out for myself. I I, I can get with some of these guys on some of these podcasts, but I just decide not to uh, at times because of the fact is my views are way different than other guys see what happens is when you doing the promoting and you're booking and things like that your ego can get in the way if you're going to be uh successful at this and then you got so many scary wrestlers that don't want to try stuff on their own and do shows themselves so i do uh some shows with some guys out here in uh, cali and uh they got enough balls to uh do a show once a month uh things like that and uh they let me come along and Shoot, uh, uh, I just go from there. You know what I'm saying? Well, we appreciate having you on. I never asked you last time what your thoughts were on the the new Jack thing with Vic Grimes. If it was a work or or a shoot, there's a lot of a lot of people that believe it's a work more than a shoot. Well, um, if they believe that that was a a, a work, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No, nah, he had they, they had some. Uh, differences of opinion i'm gonna say it like that shit they were they were one of them kind of people man you know like um when 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 he got up there and they got up on that scaffold and uh you know they fell uh, jack that's where jack really got hurt uh real bad and uh, uh i think he got brain you know uh he hurt his brain man you know what i'm saying so uh, uh he got hurt real bad uh that's when the the heat came you know and uh no i i feel like 
uh, that uh, a lot of it was a shoot. I I know Jack enough to know when uh, he gets mad enough at you and then you don't want to deal with you. And then there's times where he said, okay, I'm going to get this dude. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to try, you're going to try to do what he do. And uh, yeah, it's a trip. It's a trip. Yeah. If, if he gave him legitimate brain damage, I don't even know why that guy would, would get back in the ring with him, particularly in that kind of a dangerous match. Oh, was it dangerous or not, man? You know, flying off something like that. You can tell that if you're going to take care of somebody, you know, you, you, you'll guide them too. Uh, where they supposed to land a little bit, but uh, it, you can tell uh, that he he was going for it, and he, and on on his part, it's a good thing that it didn't happen. It didn't happen, you know what I mean? Yeah, he uh, he probably would have gone away, but he he's been lucky over the years. The the stabbing thing in the ring with that with that guy <laughs> that he did stiff him. Right, he, lucky he got away with that. Well, see, the, the, the thing about it, me and him were different. Me, that's why me and Jack was different. Uh, you can get in the ring with somebody that actually just want to stiff you and try to hurt you. I mean, really trying to hurt you, you know, not just a regular stiff shot and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I used to just handle in the ring. I used to uh, uh, handle handle a lot of stuff in the ring. And when it came out, uh, they didn't want to deal with me uh, anymore after that. Or they would ease up, you know, if we had to uh, work again. You know, um, you know, you just got to, uh, like I said, everybody got a different style. You know what I'm saying? But, it, you know, you got to be business and got to make this money. So uh, if I, if I would have broke somebody up, I, they definitely ain't going to have me back. You know what I'm saying? So, so but but with the way Jack did it, uh, uh, that, that's his style, man. That was his way, you know. Yeah, and uh, I think his legend is going to, become bigger as time goes on because I don't think there's going to be many other wrestlers like him. No, nah, he's, he, he's one of the one and onlys there. Uh, I tell you, especially uh, when he got with uh, Gypsy Joe too, you know, when uh, uh, he did that thing with Gypsy Joe. <laughs> wow. You know, uh, I'm not laughing at uh, uh, Gypsy Joe, but man, you know, uh, yeah, that was ugly. Yeah, uh, and for the Gypsy Gro Joe crowd and the stabbing crowd, there was hardly anybody there either. Right. So it just seems like, <laughs> why Why does Gypsy Joe even not sell? Like, what's the point? Well, that, that, that was the thing over his career. Um, and, and I'm pretty sure that, um, shoot, he, he, he worked a lot. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, all you got to do with it is just find your crowd and that's what he did for a minute and uh just like everybody else they find their crowds uh that would will, will, will put up with them you know the bookings and uh, the pro promoters everybody that'll put up with you and then sometimes it backfires and that one really backfired i'll tell you that yeah but there was at least no cops involved with that right he was and, he just... yeah that, that was <laughs> wow you know the, the that, that's one good thing about it is a lot of times the police don't show up in some of them places like that uh, when you have uh, uh, shows like that. Yeah, because they, don't know, if it's, out, they no. don't know if it's a work or not. Police, they wanted to arrest us. Uh, but uh, like I said, Tracy Smothers was a lawyer at the time, uh, uh, rest in peace. And uh, uh, Tracy Smothers uh, used to talk to the police for us uh, because they was going to arrest us before we even got out to the ring. Yeah, I was actually, uh, as I said, I just watched that Dark Side of the Ring again. And they they were saying that, like, they were using the N-word very freely oh, in yeah. those days at you guys. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I can imagine them. there'd be confrontations. Well, 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 well the thing about it was, uh, you know, I grew up uh, with the NWA, uh, listening to the music and um, – uh, my background with uh, my relatives uh, a lot of times on my dad's side, you know, and uh, they always would say, uh, uh, hey, we real niggas, you know what I'm saying? So I took, that, I took that as a compliment to me. So I hear the word they calling us that, you know, I said, uh, yeah, we're going to make a lot of money tonight because if we got them uh, pissed off like this. I was thinking about the business side of it. I never took it, a lot of that stuff uh, personally. I know that some people, uh, 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 
uh, are scarred from it and uh, some of the wrestlers are scarred from it. And I got some, uh, you know, I got some sympathy for him from it. But shoot, I, it was all business with me, man. I had to get in there and uh, do what I had to do. Yeah, I've heard I've heard now that wrestlers will have fans ejected for like hurting their feelings. It's like get a life. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> you know they get on the, they get on these uh, uh on the the DMs and uh, they they find out somebody don't like them. Like I if I get a, a comment. And, uh, you know, I'm going to keep it real. Shoot, uh, I had one comment saying, Mustafa, you was the weakest link, and you wasn't shit, and you can't wrestle. I was so happy to, that that person knew me. And he took out his 24 hours out of his brain uh, to say something about me. So <laughs> so I was happy that he knew me, you know. Yeah. Yeah, now we have heels that are like sticking up for each other. I noticed uh, it was in the news a few weeks ago. Uh, FTR they they went public saying they're really nice guys and oh they don't goodness. like waking up to all these DMs of of hatred. It's like you, they make millions. Who cares? Well, the the the, the, the like I said, man, it's a uh, different generation, man. Uh, the sensitivity uh, part of it, uh, you know. It's, it's business, and, and, and if you don't have people who don't like you and you are heel, that means you're going to survive in the business. Uh, back, you know, back in the day, it, it, it showed that, uh, hey, man, uh, we're going to have to get the police for this guy. Uh, but the promoter was like, damn, they got to do all that. We got to have him or her, whatever, but, but, but for sure for him, you know, and these guys now they trying to explain uh, uh, why they do this stuff they do, and um, it, can we really call some of these guys heels now? Let's keep it real. Yeah, I don't think real heel heat really exists anymore. Um, sadly, it's but, sad, ain't it? Yeah, it's unfortunate. Be happy you were bored when you were. You're right. You got to be part of it when you were. Right, man, uh, you know, so, but, the, you know, one thing I will say is, you know, like I said, the, the athletic part has, has got better, you know, but, oh, man, you know, we got a lot of acrobatic uh, uh, things going on, and uh, a lot of those guys' uh, careers going to be cut short because you're doing a, a non-functional movement, and uh, if, if anybody want to show me, Somebody that's in their sixties can still flip. Besides, uh, uh, Tuco, <laughs> you know, uh, the, I I don't know too many people that can still do that. So they they have to actually learn how to uh, work a hold and uh, and things. You know, well, I had to work uh, work work a whole wrestling show without a, a wrestling match without uh, breaking their kneecaps and all this kind of stuff. Uh, hopefully the the acrobatics and the leg slapping fad will disappear right. sooner than later. I've I I tried to watch the night one of WrestleMania. I couldn't sit through the second night just with all the leg the leg slapping and I don't know. It's just not something I enjoy watching anymore. Right, you know what? What I watch the most is I see how much is uh, they trying to uh, get Brock Lesnar out of there. You know, uh, uh, with because Brock Lesnar, I'm not saying that some of the other wrestlers are not uh, doing their thing, but you know, uh, Brock, uh, he don't he, he don't play around. And one thing about that, that they need to show him, uh, you know, uh, some uh, more respect. I think because. He is an actual UFC champion. He's a champ. He's a real champ. So, uh, but they look like they're trying to get him out of there. Yeah, he he's the best guy they have so at this point by far. I think he makes about twelve million million a year. So we oh, we lost him again, guys. But I see there's a lot of fan questions. You hear me now? Yeah. Sorry. Uh we never lost your voice. We just lost you. Oh, just lost me. Okay, I'll just yeah. make it sure. Now, last time, there's a fan asking you the pencil shavings question. Last time you admitted you did it, but I never asked you, like, what the purpose was of why you did that. Well, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. We were, uh, 
I don't know. Uh, I was writing something down uh, in the in, in there. I was writing something down on a piece of paper. You know how you um, you 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 you're working out uh, on something. And I had wrote something down on a piece of paper. The pencil was a little uh, dull, so uh, they, they, uh, it was actual something to uh, to, to get the uh, you know pencil sharpened. The pencil sharpened the kind of thing. So I had the, one of them things, and I looked at it, and uh, <laughs> it just it got involved in the smoke. I'm gonna just say it like that. It and got. You involved. were probably drunk, I guess, at the time if you were drinking, uh, yeah. but you were functional drunk, right? Yeah, drinking, and, and, and I. Once I get to drinking and get drunk and, and, and pretty high, I will start working out. And then I would uh, 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 kind of write down the kind of workout I wanted to do do it and just to see, uh, challenge my body. And, uh, and, and, and I would keep going. And it, it, but I was raised up in the, uh, back in, in North Carolina. We would, uh, being 13, 14 and all that, we played basketball, but we would drink. Uh, we'd get these beers and We'll find a way uh, the older people, uh, uh, certain cats would, you know, some of the thugs would get us some some beer. And we start drinking beer. And the next thing you know, we'll go on the basketball court and say, I bet you can't beat me in basketball. Or let's go play some football uh, or something. And we would be drunk out there playing. And then you'll get sobered up quick. Uh, you'll sweat that stuff out. And I've been having that happen for a long time. What was it like going to the gyms in Puerto Rico when you were buzzed? Man, it was nice, man. You would sweat so much. Uh, you <laughs> you would sweat so bad in there. You drinking water. You gulping water down. And then uh, I go back in there and uh, I get on the treadmill a little bit. Then I jump in there and do the weights. And then I would do my body weight stuff. You know, I got the Hindu push-ups and the Hindu squats, stuff like that. And uh, uh, bridge, you know, bridging and all kind of stuff. And then, shoot, uh, after, after that, uh, after you sweat it out real good, I, I go right back to the bar, man, it, 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 on the beach and get drunk again, man. Then I would run from where I was at uh, on the beach and run all the way back to uh, my spot where I was living at. Did they have you at the Dahlia, Dahlia Hotel there? Or? The hotel. They, Yeah, I bet you they got some words to say about me at that place. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know they do because, man, we came out there, man, we would party. I would talk to... Some of the some of the people you know couldn't speak English and and uh, we would party, man, out in front of the 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 the, the, the apartment and everything. Go down to the beach uh, and, and just drink and then have a good time. And the the ladies were definitely beautiful in that territory from my from my time there. Yeah, they 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 were there. They was always there. Someone wants to know how were the eliminators to work with. Oh, the Eliminators was great, man. Uh, Saturn and uh, Perry and, uh, the, you know, my man, they they were good, uh, definitely. Uh, but me and Perry had a more of an understanding uh, than, than anybody. Uh, we, would, uh, we could see uh, certain things uh, that needed to be done in the match. Not to say that, that Jack and all them didn't, uh, didn't know. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we, we would see certain things that need to be done in the match and we would do it. And uh, the, the eliminators were great, man. Uh, I enjoyed working with them. Have you heard anything about where Perry is these days? Because he's been missing for like three or four years now, I think. Oh, maybe he's gone to the same place where you keep going. But um... oh, there you are again. Yeah. Um, have you heard anything from, from Perry because he's been missing for a while now? Nah, man, you know, I, I understand the situation because I did the same thing. I went down to Vegas, uh, before I, I was about to take a trip to England and I had to clean up and sober up real quick. Uh, well, I ain't going to say, but I cleaned up enough to, uh, make a trip over to England and, and, and work, but I was in those streets in Vegas for I was uh, out there uh, homeless for about eight months on, on myself, you know, and, uh, you know, I was uh, surviving by hanging out in the casinos and you have so many people out there uh, giving you drink tokes and uh, uh, free coupons uh, to go eat 
and things like that. And, uh, you know, it got uh, just strung out real bad. And then, uh, it, you know, I bounced back. But, it, but I'm going to tell you another thing was funny. I still worked out in the parks. Still tried to work out, do pull-ups, all kind of stuff, you know. Very interesting. What company did you work for in uh, England? Was it Brian? Oh, I think his uh, his phone might be dying. Oh. Do you remember the the company you worked for in England? It was uh, for Scott. It was it was a uh, it was a company uh, opposite of uh, Dixon. Okay. Dixon had had a thing, and uh, uh, Scott Scott uh, wanted to go against them, uh, and I can't really remember because uh, I was I was on the the over there. I was uh, uh, what were we doing over there? Shoot, it, 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 uh, we had a little bit of opium and all kind of stuff like that. <laughs> doing, yeah, uh, uh, stuff like that, and we were hitting that a little bit, and then uh, sober up and uh, uh, hash, and and, and we we're going from there, uh, not knowing I could have went to prison. <laughs> fooling around over there like that. But hey, what it was. And we go to the pubs. I was with uh Skull Murphy. A lot. Uh back. Yeah, I I wrestled for Brian Dixon and the the drinking is a big part of it there. But I think oh I, th I think we might be out of luck soon, but interest interesting great stories. I don't know what, what what's happening there. But um, someone wants to know if you were there for that fight uh, at ECW when someone was disrespectful to Tammy Sitch and there was a big fight outside. You, you know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, at that time, I wasn't there. Um, at that time, when uh, uh, she was there. Um, I know... Uh, with, with Chris Candido, man, that was one of my one of a good friends of mine. Um, you know, the, wow, that was that was a trip with that situation. But I was I don't think I was there when that happened. Did you did you ever advise him like what are you doing with this girl? She's having sex with everybody. Well, or did he like that? Well, well, of course, you know, you, you were saying, hey, man, uh, you a hot commodity, brother. You 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 can get out here and, uh, and get. What you you know get you some new uh, females or whatever, but uh, you know he was just uh, uh, he was just in love with her. He was uh, infatuated with her, you know, and everything. What do you think about her current situation, where she's looking at doing some serious time for manslaughter? Oh, I think uh, it's funny. I think Million Dollar Man's son is actually facing more time than her, though. Um, what did you think about uh, Sonny in, in jail now for manslaughter? Yeah, I know. I heard about that. I heard about that, man. Uh, now my, my wife was asking me that with my Wi-Fi on. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but uh, we'll just go. We'll just keep going until. Uh, yeah, we could th we could throw in the towel at, at at some point if it keeps doing that. It's 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 okay. Yeah, uh, it's, it's you should, good. Let me know, man. You know. Yeah, no, it's it's good to see you, anyways, and good to hear your your stories. Um, what was your favorite feud of ECW? Um, well, actually, to me, I thought uh, uh, Public Enemy uh, was our, was our best one because uh, it was uh, a lot more easier because uh, Eliminators wasn't truly. Uh, a baby face kind of thing. The Dudleys, uh, the same way they wasn't really, uh, they were, don't get me wrong. They had their fans, but they wasn't really a baby face. I thought the public enemy was more of a baby face and, 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 and that made it more easier for us. Someone so, on here says you were his favorite tag team with new Jack and, uh, somebody else. Oh, Love the beatdown Brock put on Cody. I actually love that too. I think Cody's over overrated, and I hope I, I think it's horrible that they're making a second title. But uh, 
We we might throw in the towel and try this again another time. Oh, there. Yeah, there you go. There you go again. Wow. Um, some, you know, someone I think, on here. Uh, can, you, can you keep it to the point where we can't click on? You know, where I'm just on there and keep it like this. This one. Oh, like just like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Let's try and just wait and see what happens. Yeah, see if it doesn't. Uh, uh, someone wants to know if you and Jack ever went to FMW. I know you wrestled over in Japan, but I don't know about FMW. No, I didn't go to uh, FMW. Uh, I was at uh, Big Japan uh, wrestling, and uh, Jack, uh, you know, I think I think he had a felony uh, due to the fact he had felony, so he won't think he would have gave him a passport to go, even though some people have done worse than that and still got passports, you know. Yeah, it's weird how how they do it for some and not for others. Somebody says they loved you in Sacramento pro wrestling. Do you have any stories from working for them? Well, the uh, the, the the part that's funny is uh, the length of the the length of matches at times. You know, uh, one thing about it is uh, uh, the, the the guy we have there is a, a samurai, and uh, you know he. Uh, has his match. He, he's so open-minded and a, a good people uh, that he, he never says, uh, uh, hey, you, you guys go 15 minutes or something like that. Uh, sometimes you just have them wrestle, man. You know what I'm saying? So uh, uh, that's, it's fun, though. You know, it's fun to be out here and do it. Someone be wants to know if you ever wrestled the Nasty Boys. I know New Jack obviously had his, his skirmish with Brian Nobbs. Well, the, the the people don't know either uh, about. Uh, no, I never worked uh, uh, personally the the nasty boys, but then a lot of people don't know that uh, man. He put they they put a hurting on uh, uh, what was the wrestler's name in UFC? Um, oh, Ken Shamrock. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There was there was a bad scene with that. They were working together, uh, and uh, it, it was bad, pretty bad scene. I almost killed them. Yeah, actually, when I when I was interviewing Nobs, he he was telling me this was when Jack was still alive off camera that he was eventually going to get revenge and and so forth. But I found that uh, unlikely that he was actually going to pull that off. Right. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 you know, that's why I sometimes not to uh, try to avoid a, a fight or nothing like that. Some people, you know. You clash, you know what I'm saying? You clash and what, what's the use? If it ain't going to make no money, ain't no make no sense to be hanging around certain people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't want to get in fights if you're not getting paid after a certain age. Right. Definitely. Um, yeah. <laughs> as far as uh, a Smoky Mountain, I know that you knew Johnny K-9 there. Was he, was he pretty straight and narrow? when he was in Smoky Mountain, or was he still doing stuff on the side that he was known for up here in Canada? Right, Bruiser Bedlam. Yeah. Good dude. I'm telling you, with big heart. I'm talking about, I love that man. You know, it was good dude, man. You know, there ain't no homo stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, the real deal. Uh, uh, he was doing his thing. He was. He was still doing his thing. Uh, he let me know what was going on. Uh, but we, man, we go we go to bars and and just kick it and have a good time, man. And uh, you know, I, I had to tell him, I had to tap him on the shoulder sometimes. I said, "All right, man, it's all good." <laughs> I said, "You got to remember, you know, you in the United States, you ain't supposed to be here. So you gotta calm down, man. Let's go to let's go to some spots where you can calm down. Let's kick it, man." And he said, "Man, I'm so glad hanging around with you, man. You 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 keep me calm down and everything." I said, "Yeah, man, let's go have some fun, man." Shoot, let's just kick it. Yeah, I wonder how he was able to get into the U.S. Oh. being a Canadian citizen. Come on, man. If he's doing what he was doing, that yeah. was a problem getting into the States. You know what I'm saying? So the the, the thing about it, I, well, we went to Atlanta one time, and we had, a, we had a show down that way. So we went to a part, uh, went to one of my spots, and I had a couple of uh, childhood people that I grew up with. And <laughs> I walked in. They was a little. They were scared of me because you know I, I hope my whole appearance had changed. And uh, when 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 Bruiser came in there, Johnny came. <laughs> they 
They said, we, we'll see you later, man. We, we, uh, we'll talk to you later. we get out of here. I, we scared them so bad. And uh, I just, I got a kick out of that, you know. Yeah, they were saying on that New Jack documentary that your character in that tag team was how you were in real life at that time. You weren't, you weren't really acting. Is that true? Well, it, 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 like, like for instance, me and you, real cool, real cool. We'll go, man. I go down the alleyway with you, you know, kind of thing, yeah. you know. But, 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 it was certain people. I knew that they was uh, 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 they wasn't about the business. Okay, so this, I'm gonna say this: the we hear those stories where they was racist. Uh, we hear these stories that they were prejudiced and all this. But if you wasn't about the money, I would act a I would act a certain way, man, and I didn't like it. You know, like that. And you know, some people say, "Well, you didn't like them because they was racist." No, I've been around people who make money uh, they didn't like me. You know what I'm saying? And I know that for sure, but they seem to green. Okay. And these other people, uh, I don't know what their business was about. So I was ready to go off on them many times. So that, yeah, I did act like that. Uh, that. That was me a couple of times, a few times. I'm take that back a few times. Yeah. Yeah. It's obvious that uh, you guys were too controversial for WWE, but when you were at your prime physique, you had an amazing look. Definitely as good as any of the the top WWE guys at that time. Well, I tell you what, man. Uh, uh, my mom, my mother uh, owned, uh, 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 you know, a vitamin store. So uh, it was so many things. What I would do, I would look at the ingredients that was in uh, Roy's or uh, whatever, and then I said, "Well, let me look at the natural side of it." Because I, I, when I was in the Air Force at the, at one time. I power lifted. I was taking okay. I was taking Decadur Bowling. Uh, I was taking Winstraw. I weighed 219. Uh, I could uh, bench 485. Uh, and then uh, uh, my, my squat was like 650. My deadlift was 625. But the blood was dirty, if you know what I mean. So I was taking all kinds of stuff. So what I did was I did the, I did the same research because it, it, it's bad on you. It's bad on you, sis. As we can see now. You see how some of the bodybuilders look now. Yeah. Hey. So what I did was I did the same ingredients. And then my workouts was mixing body weight with weights. And that's how I got that that physique at that one time to that peak. And plus the youth too. Come on, youth helps. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, you would have been what, your your late twenties or mid twenties? Thirty time. Yeah, my time, like late twenties or early thirties. And uh, you know, I master uh man, shit, man. I used to hang out with uh when I was in the it was WWF at the time. Uh we'd go to the gym and uh, it was Jimmy Snooker, hang around uh Barb Barbarian. Uh these guys, man, they was there was no joke in the gym, you know what I'm saying? So uh in Hercules, Hercules Hernandez at the time. Uh you, you go to the gym with those guys, man, and uh, you know, they say, Hey man, we go be at this gym. I didn't go ride with them personally. But you know, we meet them down some of those gyms, and man, it, it was good. And then I watched uh, Kane, which was, uh, 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 you know, he he was the same way. You know, what I'm saying uh, he, he watched what he eat and go to the gym, work out. And I remember one time it was me, Mr. Fuji, Kevin Sullivan, uh, Kane. Uh, it was me. I think D'Lo went with us uh, to the gym. We was working out. And I was watching everybody, and I was seeing how they were isolating their muscles and stuff like that. So I said, you know what? I'm not I'm not into bodybuilding like that, but let me go and try some of this stuff, see how it works. But I was more into the body weight stuff. Do you think that D-Lo's would have had a bigger push if it wasn't for that draws incident? I believe so, man. I, I, I You know, when you hurt somebody, uh, uh, sometimes like that, it, 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 I don't care what people think, they, they'll take it personal, you know, and, and uh, it, it'll go upstairs and, uh, you know, draws was, they was trying to push draws too, you know? So yeah, I, I believe that that slowed him down a little bit. Now, I don't know what he thinks, but I think it did. Uh, cause it seemed like he wasn't with the company pretty soon after that. And he still had good jobs as an agent and stuff, but it seemed like 
his momentum was never the same after that, but who knows? Uh, you know, they, they, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, when you work for somebody, chances are that you can, you could be fired. Now, if you get out here and I wish some, uh, a lot more wrestlers would get some balls on them, we can have more than AEW uh, uh, trying to go against WWE, which I don't know why you're trying to go against w, uh, WWE. You get your own crowd. That's what we did, ECW. We went and got our own crowd. Smoky Mountain, we got our own uh, crowd, the, the, the followers. We didn't try to take over. Because, uh, you know, people, once people got their mind made up about uh, a wrestler that they like, that's who they like. That's how it goes. And then the next one comes in there, that's who they like. So uh, I, don't, I don't even know why some of these guys uh, get all jealous and fighting over that bullshit. What do you think about that CM Punk thing in AEW where now they, they might be putting him on a show where the people he has heat with are not going to be on that same show? Uh, <laughs> well, CM Punk is, is uh, very unique. I'm going to tell you that. Uh, very good, great talent, man. Uh, you know, uh, I, he got balls. He got in that cage. He went and got in that cage, man. I give him that. Uh, when he got back out, he started to realize that it's some it's some bullshit in the in the wrestling business. Uh, that we we okay UFC okay like like Vince you, you know man you competed you was a champion in the amateurs and all, every kind of uh, things like that wrestling and stuff. Uh, you you know that when you heard pro wrestling the first time in the amateurs you was like that's some bullshit until you find out you can make some money. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So CM Punk, when he got back, uh, this is just my opinion. My opinion is not the Dominion kind of thing like I got it from another guy uh, on uh, on YouTube. But uh, it's, it's that um, you once you come from UFC, they don't want to hear that shit. They just want to see you knock somebody out, put somebody out, you the champion or you a uh, top 10 rank. And then when you go back to pro wrestling like uh, Brock did, Brock heard some some bullshit and he ain't putting up with it no more you know since he's been to the ufc same thing with cm punk he seen some things and he just ain't putting up with it no more that's all and now he's sitting at home getting paid which is pretty good yes for people like us i'm sure you've had to work uh, normal jobs in your life oh yeah oh yeah we <laughs> are. i'm not ashamed i'm not ashamed of it because um you know, I have uh, been around uh, when I was growing up. Uh, my brother hang around a lot of people, Artis Gilmore, NBA uh, guys back in the day. Uh, John Drew at the time. Um, they would tell you, they said, "Hey, man, this is borrowed time." So I'm gonna play uh, in NBA for about ten years, fifteen years, as much as I can, and then I know I got to come back out here and and do one of these uh, nine to five kind of things. You know, being commentator, something. You know, sports analysts or whatever. So, yeah, I I always see these wrestlers publicly asking for their releases, but the minimum pay for a main roster WWE guy is like two hundred and fifty grand a year. They only work two or three times a week these days. It's still a lot better than a normal job. I have, you know what? They forgot. Some of them either was living with a silver spoon in them. You know, you know what yeah. I'm saying. Either they live in a silver spoon, which is very few, or they just forget how hard it was, uh, you know, and then they get caught up in the, uh, it, it's the ego. It's the ego will the destroy, man, and, 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 you know, I ain't going to get all scientific, but it's also, it, it's four things that uh, messes up people, you know, a lot of times. First of all, some people just flat out stupid, you know, uh, they just, <laughs> they have no clue about what they're doing. Then you had other people who like to put problems where there's none at. Okay. Then you had other ones that, that that just loves nothing. They just it's nothing going on, and they just uh, addicted to it. And then you had the other the the fourth one is they, they just uh, forget they forget how hard it was to get there to where they where they at, you know. And then when when once they let go. And then they got to go around back to these old the, these indies again. Then they realize, oh wow, I was tripping. You know. Yeah, I mean, I've had it where I've had to demand money from from getting shorted and 
and right. so forth. Did you and New Jack have to deal with that much with your reputations? Uh, well, when we was in uh, North Georgia, uh, uh, yeah, we we uh, got a hold of a couple of people. You know, <laughs> we had to, we had uh, uh, axe handles and stuff like that, and uh, we never really uh, physically had to, had to use them. But yeah, we showed them that yeah, we can we can handle these things now. If, if you don't want to pay it, that money came right there. It, all of a sudden, uh, miraculously, the money just came out of nowhere. Uh, someone was asking if you met Giant Gonzalez ever. I know you were back working for WWE around the time he was there. Yeah, he was a good dude, man. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I met him. He couldn't speak English, though. But 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 what I would do, I was a basketball player, and he was a basketball player. And and I was showing, I would do a, a you know, a make out like I'm doing a basketball move. He said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good." You know, <laughs> so that's only that was the only connection we had, you know, because of the basketball. You know, we talked a little bit. Someone wants to know what the worst situation you've ever been in with a wrestling fan. Well, I think the wrestling fan was in more fun, uh, more in trouble than I was. Uh, I remember one time we was um, we was in uh, it wasn't Massachusetts. It could have been you know you can't remember all these wrestling matches you have sometimes. So it, it was either New York, I think it was New York, it was up the state, well one of them, and uh, we was going through the crowd, and so I punched the guy. You know somebody grabbed me, man, with my arms. So I turned around and punched, him, you know, and I didn't give him it my all, but I gave him enough. He went down, and the, the people grabbed him, and I looked and I said, shit. I went back to who I was going. To. Who I was uh, working that night, I got back in the dressing room, and uh, I seen uh, security coming back there, and I said, "Okay, I'm in trouble. I think police gonna take me this time. I think I'm, I think I'm gone." <laughs> Next thing you know, the guy had a bloody T-shirt, and he wanted me to autograph it because I punched him in the face. <laughs> yeah, those those are the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I was in trouble. I mean, six security came back and said. Hey, Mustafa, uh, I said, oh, man, uh, uh, where the police at? He said, oh, the police, don't worry about it. He wants your autograph. I said, on what? He said, on that bloody T-shirt because he's bleeding so bad. <laughs> After I hit him, you know, so I signed the T-shirt. That's hilarious. Somebody wanted to know earlier, your Mount Rushmore of tag team wrestling. Well, I'm going to go back, uh, and like I said, this is my opinion. Uh, the Anderson brothers, because of the, the money they drew. Uh, well, I'm going to gangsters, you know, because of the controversy. Um, the the uh, Wahoo McDaniels and Paul Jones was a great tag team. Um, when I got up there, I thought the British Bulldogs were real good. At one time, um, Rock and Roll Express. Uh, I could go on, you know. I thought the I thought uh, the the Road Warriors was was great at one time. Um, I thought Rocky Johnson and and, and Tony Atlas uh, was a great tag team at one time. Then I like Dick Murdoch and and uh, Adrian Adonis. Yeah, when they was working. So yeah. I got all. I can't really. I can name them, but I don't have a, a, a favorite. But my favorite that I remember is the, the Anderson brothers, who ended up training you, right? Yeah, Gene Anderson. He was the one to train. He was actual Gene Anderson. You know what I'm saying? So I'm surprised that they never did you guys against the Road Warriors at, at some point because that would have drawn. You got to remember, you already got to remember how, you know, it's that jealousy, man. It's that yeah. jealousy, and, 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 they, and, and, and they got to agree to it, too, you know. But see, yeah. when, when you see, when, if you see, if you're a real businessman, like me and you are, okay, I would have done it. Okay, I don't know, you know, you got all these guys. Look at the guys that, that, uh, that, that that's in it, man. You know, you got promoters, you got bookers. They got their thoughts of things, and 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 sometimes they think they're making a great decision in making the money, but they're not. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, and it seems like you guys would have got along well with Hawk. Oh yeah, 
Oh yeah, definitely, man. I know for sure. You know. Did you uh, talk to Rick Rude much when he was in ECW for that brief time? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. He was good. He was he, man. Uh, he was good people, man. He was smarting me up about the business. Um, uh, he, he he was telling me, uh, you know, uh, that at the time when he got hurt, you know, and and and, and you can tell he, he 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 was tore up inside a little bit. I'm not saying that I know him through and through and everything, but you can tell, man. He he it, it tore him up when he got injured out there in Japan. And what about Sid? He was back in ECW for for a little while. It was all right, man. Uh, we, me and we talked. Yeah, he was all right. Sid Vicious. I'm talking about Sid Vicious, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we was cool, man. He was all right. Yeah, he gets a bad reputation, but uh, he he always seems cool. Whatever I've met him. Yeah, uh, I don't know, man. Uh, some people's approaches to to certain people. I would I, I, I treat people like people. You know, I ask them about their family. Uh, how they doing? Uh, I didn't get caught up in the stargazing part of the of the business. You know, I had admiration and stuff like that. But I, I would ask them, man, how your family doing? Uh, and stuff like that, man. You know, I didn't uh, try to do all that. Oh man, I've been watching you for you know all that old stuff. Someone says uh, they remember in Queens, New York, at ECW, somebody threw a bag of charcoal in the ring. Do you remember that? They they threw more than that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we don't had everything. Uh, that probably was. It, it, it threw, my my cousin at the time that was living. Uh, he come down from the South Bronx, and uh, brother, you talking about a party? One time we went outside after a match, and you know I was going to hang out. Uh, uh, Jack was already gone. He said Jack wanted to go kick it somewhere else. So my cousin was uh, out in the back. Man, we went out in the back. It was uh, every every gang that you could think of was out in the back. And I said, man, you know all these dudes? He said, yeah, we partied and had a good time right out one of the buildings, right outside one of the buildings in the back. Police was riding by. The police wouldn't even come out. They said, <laughs> he had so many people. It was Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, you name it, Italians, everybody was there. It was a good party. You mentioned that your dad's side uh, before there was pimps and stuff on your dad's side. It was a bit more of a wilder side. What was uh, the, the craziest thing you saw from that side of the family that you're able to talk about where maybe the statute of limitations? Yeah, it, it, it's a couple of step limitations, but I can say this. Uh, I had an uncle and, uh, you know, one of my uncles and uh, he was into the uh, the, 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 the talking about the pimp stuff all the time. And, and, uh, you know, uh, he was telling me, he said that, Hey man, uh, you know, you can get treated like a hoe or you can, you can pimp your way in the business. If you're going to do this, if you're going to do it, cause he found out that I was going to wrestle. He said, if you're going to do it, don't be the hoe. <laughs> I said, don't be the hoe. I said, I said, don't the hoes make money too? He said, yeah, but don't be the hoe. Just shut up and listen to him. Yeah. <laughs> so that was it. That was all. That was his advice. You know about stuff. That's funny. And you, you said your mom was from a religious side, so that's that's quite a, a mix between the two. A, a good big, good mix for you. Yeah, a big mix. You, you know, like uh, my dad uh, was. It was rough too. He was in the Korean War and stuff like that. But he. He was just a good people, man. He good, good heart, man. You know what I'm saying? They were they were my heroes. Uh, Cause I could. That's the only place I could go and just be myself. Now my mom was a very sweet lady, but she told me like it is. You know, uh, if you're gonna get in shape, you're too damn fat. Now, I mean, one time <laughs> I, was, I was in junior high and I got cut in the, on the basketball team, and I was just crying like a. <laughs> and she said, "See what are you crying for?" I said. Uh, I get cut in basketball. She said, you should have got cut. You're fat. You're out of shape. I'm going to send you down to the community center, and you're going to start playing some uh, on some teams down there and, and get yourself in some shape. And, and then you'll be all right after that. That's how she <laughs> She didn't hold no punches, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, yeah. kids need that sometimes. Oh, dude. Man. Man. Someone wants to know, did you ever get an offer from WCW? You know, I'm gonna tell you the truth. 
I was about to get an offer. We came to Vegas. Uh, we talked to uh, Johnny Ace. And Johnny Ace was was like, hey, man, give you that dark match, give you a, a trial. Now, I don't know if he's blowing, uh, trying to blow smoke up my ass, you know what I'm saying? But at that time, he seemed serious. We, we sat there and we talked um, and, and things. He said, man, we, uh, give, you, give you a shot at it. Next thing you know, Vince bought him out. Vince got a hold of him, man, and that was the end of that. Yeah, uh, that's too bad. Well, I don't, I don't feel bad about it. You know what I'm saying? Because like the freedom that I had in the business, other guys, if, if some people found out how much freedom I had in the business, they would definitely be jealous. Or, uh, uh, like, wow, I wish I would have had that kind of fun. You know, uh, able to do the work like that. You know. Somebody wants to know what match was your biggest payday in wrestling. You don't have to say the pay, but do you remember like what it was? Well, actually, believe it or not, uh, uh, one of the I used to make way more jobbing uh, in the WWF and WCW than I made anything else. But when I went against New Jack in that pay per view, man, I saw so much merch and, and stuff. Man, it was it was unbelievable that night. Unbelievable. Did Paul uh, owe you money at all, or was was he always free? No, I got out of there. I got out of there before all that mess was coming. Okay. Because I knew Paul's habits. Paul had some habits, like all of us. Uh, had some behavior problems, like all of us. And uh, I knew, I, oh, it's time to go. So I shot on down and talked to uh, Dutch Mantel down. And he was in uh, uh, Puerto Rico. Now I, I shot on down to Puerto Rico after that. Someone wants to know if you have a Paul Heyman story you could share. Well, the, the Paul Heyman story I remember was uh, when uh, uh, Jack wanted to, you know, uh, have the match where we, we would start going against each other uh, and everything. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of, you know, I was like, wow, man, uh, I, I'm a professional. So this, this is what they want right now. So um, we went out there and I was supposed to turn on Jack. And, uh, you know, I was supposed to uh, side with the Dudleys at that time. So uh, I was supposed to pick up the guitar in, 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 in Pearl Harbor, him in the, in, in the back. You know what I'm saying? So they was cheering us on. They was cheering us on. Next thing you know, I picked up that guitar right at the right time and, 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 and hit, him in, hit him with it. He went down, sold for me and everything. Uh, got back into the dressing room. Paul Heyman said, you are a genius. Can't believe that. And I looked at Paul Heyman like, you crazy. A genius? What the hell? That's it. Well, I took it as a compliment. So, you know, uh, but I was like, man, I was like, get the money, man. And then, give me the money. Shit. <laughs> All them compliments. Give me my money. Right. Was uh, the ECW arena your favorite building to wrestle in? Yes, it was, man, because of the fact that the, the freedom. Um, you didn't have to worry about going to jail. You know what I'm saying? We, uh, we would party in the dressing room uh, and, 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 and kick it, drink uh, you know, after the match with beers everywhere. You know, just kicking and having a good time watching the other guys work, you know. And, uh, yeah, ECW was the best. That, that arena in Philly. Definitely. Philadelphia people are uh, very unique, great people. I'm telling you that. They, they something else. Yeah, it's uh, it's a unique town for sure. They don't they don't like me too much there. Hey, that's a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> you uh, you would have made a lot of money in that town. Yeah, yeah. Someone uh, someone wants to know if you would ever manage a wrestler today. Are you managing anyone in that company you're working for? If 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 anybody give me a call, man, and and the pay. Uh, is is phenomenal with with working with the guy. I do it, but I'm not gonna sit there and try to bag myself into these places, man. Because I feel like it's it's not worth it. I think we got too many wrestlers. You, you you see how it is now. You got the XFL, you got the USFL. Okay, those guys making pretty good money, you know, for themselves. Uh, uh, it, it's not NFL. But they making they they they're making some money. We need more uh people like that in wrestling with balls like that. 
to have organ to have these territories again. Yeah, because everyone always talks about how wrestling's evolved, but there's less places to work than the territory days, so less people have jobs overall. Some people are making more money than anyone ever made, but it's it's not really that many. Like there's there's less jobs in wrestling. Well, but you got to remember, there's trillions of dollars in the world. What what, what are yeah. we? Talking? You know, mentally, mentally, some people just don't have it to run a show. They, you you got to you got to uh, and and not to have an ego. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying it, it, it's like if you're gonna run these shows, the 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 people you bringing in, that's who you uh, 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 bringing for the crowd. And to make money, bottom line, to make money, but you 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 have to not have an ego and and and, and run these territories. It's too it's money in every city uh, to run. But the thing about it is, you you got to have the the mental equivalent to handle what Vince has went through, uh, the Crockett's went through, uh, uh, the Florida wrestling, the Grams back in the day, uh, Roy Shire out here in the West Coast. Uh, uh, down in LA, you know, you got to have a different mentality for this. And if you ain't, if you don't have it, it you, these excuses come up all the time. You can't run the town. You can't do this. You can't do that. But look at look at AEW. All you need is a nice benefactor, and you get a <laughs> you get a nice benefactor. The machine uh, take care of itself. Yeah, their crowds aren't bad. They're they're not quite WWE, but they do beat WWE some weeks. Dynamite does get bigger crowds than Raw some weeks. So that's you know, pretty good. What it comes down to if you got the talent, uh the in the ring stuff sometimes don't really matter. Cause because think about it, how many guys made a lot of money that couldn't really work? Yeah, a, a lot. It all <laughs> depends on the who who gives you the push. Yeah. And what you do with the push. And what you do with it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't fuck it up if you get it, for sure. <laughs> right. Um, right. Somebody wants to know, uh, I know your wife is right there and you're happily married, but did you ever witness any ring rat stories you could talk about from other well, people? That, 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 that was just a normal, man. They, they, were, they, they were everywhere. You know what I'm saying? But the 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 fact of the matter is you also gotta remember too, uh, uh, uh let me sober up some of the, the people. Some of the guys got in a lot of trouble, you know, with rape charges and uh some of them was true, some of them wasn't, uh beat downs, uh getting robbed uh in a lot of places. So yeah, it it, it was funny one way, but a lot of times I knew the game and I knew that uh, some of that stuff was like too true to be too good to be true, you know. Uh, some of those guys that you know, I just got you know, <laughs> one of the, the, the I ain't gonna bring up his name though. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna put him on the spot. I don't like to put people on the spot like that. They come, like, I got robbed, man. He said, you got robbed. I thought she was cool. Man, I got robbed. What should I do? I said, consider it a L. Do not call the police. She is long gone. Forget it. Remember that as a lesson. That's all I can say about that one. Now, you can do what you want to do. You go right ahead. But I would take an L and then call it that. Well, how did you know? Uh, I said, man, I know how they are. I've I seen a few things in my life. So, yeah. Yeah, dep especially depending on the city. Yeah. Yeah, man. In, yeah. in Vegas, the police aren't going to do anything for you. They're going to tell you. Didn't you know, stupid? That could yeah. <laughs> Somebody wants to know your thoughts on Jamie Dundee. Did you ever run into him? Uh, uh, Jamie, Jamie um, was a great worker. You know, um, um, he knew the game uh, of the business. Uh, he, he, you just run across this opposition uh, with things. Now, I don't know what I don't know what uh, bridges they burn. Anything like that, I'm not going to get in their business. But, uh, you know, he, he knew the business. He could work. Uh, and, uh, you know, he was good. He was good people to me. I thought he was all right. How did you get along with the Sandman? Oh, man. That's my boy, man. 
man. That, 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 that's my dog, man. That Sam, man, uh, he, he, he's one of those guys. He don't hold no punches on, as far as telling like it is on certain things. And I seen you work him. Didn't you have? Didn't you do a show with him? Didn't have yeah, him? no, he's a great guy. I've met him a few times. Yeah, yeah. he's he's fun. He's Hell, fun yeah. to hang out with. Talking about at that time when I was, like I said, when I was able to drink. Uh, I, By the way, we were both hammered in that for that match. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, 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 he 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 can he can party, man. He know how to party. Yeah, yeah. But it allows you to hit each other harder, right? Yes, yeah. You don't feel it. You don't feel it. You don't feel it when you. <laughs> you know. But yeah, no, he's a great guy. What about Sabu? Uh, they, I wrestled him a few times. He's seen, he's pretty cool, but he's in a lot of pain. Well, he should be. Okay, I mean that dude did some stuff, and I would look. I said, "Don't do it. Don't don't." And he jump off a ladder and. Into something on a rail. Uh, I don't see him flip on a rail. He, he he would hit the rope. He's supposed to splash on the uh, uh, the guy that was laying right there, and he hit the rail some kind of funny way. And I said, "Man, it gotta be. It gotta have a broke leg." So he limp back, and he worked the next night. He, he was something else. He was a great. I thought he was a great talent. I thought he was. Yeah. Good. And he was good people too. Uh, he was a good dude. Yeah, it's too bad uh, he lost his his girlfriend there a couple of years ago. That that was you can tell that that was a, a his backbone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've was hung out with them a few times, and it seemed like they were really close. Right, right. So, yeah, but good good guy there, and there's a guy that will smoke pot with you before a match. <laughs> yeah, we all did. Me and our- uh, um, let's see. It was a, it, a little it, Scorpio, it, by the way. RVD. Uh, man, we would get lifted. I remember one time I brought some good stuff from New York one time, man. And yeah. uh, they thought it was just regular. They thought it was the regular degular stuff. You know what I'm saying? Man, they got in there and they hit that. They puffed it. <laughs> they was just choking it. Man, what, what, what is this? I said, it's weed. No, it's not. I said, no, it's weed. Good stuff, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, we had good times, man. Then we go work. Then we go to the show and <laughs> have some good matches and stuff. Have a good time. Yeah, it, there you go. That's it, how you can have those hardcore <laughs> matches, and and and, and you're more open to taking the punishment. And, you know, and Tuco Scorpio was a a, a great connoisseur of, of cannabis. Yeah. I think that's why he lived up here for a while. Oh yeah, it's, it's pretty good. He for a while he was dating some woman in Montreal. Oh okay, they're, they're not together anymore. But uh, he, be- he he wrestled for me out here a few times. Right. But but he's a great guy. He's a really tough guy and a great guy. Yes, he is. A lot. a lot of people didn't understand uh, because he he was one of the few guys that was in Japan. He actually was raised up in that dojo in Japan. Someone says, who rolled the best blunt? Well, uh, I, I, I think that uh, who was pretty fast at uh, rolling a blunt? Um, RVD. RVD rolled blunt real good. You know, because I had to wait for I had to wait for him because when I would try them, they looked uh, uh, they would look all kind of funny style and stuff like that when I try to roll them. But uh, you know, with, yeah. with him, he he rolled them just right. They'd be even all the way out <laughs> to the end, like a uh, like a cigar. Yeah, it's it's much better for people like you and me that you could just buy them now. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, like like I said, well, I'm gonna tell people, uh, you know, uh, out here. Um, I, I had to stay totally sober. I can't do anything. Uh, I, it'll trigger me back into my old life. So, uh, I, I, but I have no problem with uh, um, uh, weed. You know what I'm saying? I have no problem with that. Uh, the, the, do you ever see this movie, man? They got a movie called Reefer Madness. No, I haven't seen it. The old black and white movie called Reefer Madness. And uh, they got on there. You ought to hear the guy talk at the beginning. He's he wearing glasses. He said, these narcotics are the, I said, I said you, you call them narcotics. Like it's cocaine or something. You know what I'm saying? So, right. 
I re I recently went to like a, a 420 thing uh, last week, I guess, and it was just like 300 people sitting in a park quietly smoking. Oh man, I like feel you're not gonna go crazy on that. I, I, I feel sorry for them that they. I mean, I guess that was uh, what. Well, well, a 420 party should be a 420 party. You don't have to go to jail or nothing, but yeah. you're having bands and and, and kicking it and. And uh, see, they 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 supposed to have all kind of people that, you know, that that that, that support that stuff. You know? I think because it's legal here now, it used to be a big thing when it was illegal. Everyone would come there to to do it as a protest. But now that it's legal in Canada nationwide, people don't celebrate 420 as much. Well, this is this new generation. They don't know how to party like we did. See, we would have Cypress Hill. Cottonmouth Kings, we would, uh, uh, I worked for them before, you know, when I was in Atlanta. And, uh, you know, they, they would be smoking, the, the, the people would be smoking in the in the crowd, and then Cypress Hill would come out there partying. Man, they don't know how to do it like we did back in the day. That's for sure. But I'm sure, I'm sure you're, you and uh, New Jack are more hardcore than I, than I ever was. Um, <laughs> but I've had, there's a lot of stuff fall. I'll wait for 20 more years to, to discuss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you mentioned you, you, you did security for bands. Someone was asking, uh, did you ever meet Dr. Dre or Ice Cube? I never met them, but I, but I, I did work for Tupac back in the day. Uh, it was in Atlanta, and uh, you know he had a show out there. And... Uh, uh, it was Tupac. I worked with uh, LaFace Records, which was TLC, Usher, uh, did security for them. Um, uh, you know, I'm not going to sit there and say I was personal bodyguard or nothing like that, but we did the security part. You know what I'm saying? And uh, 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 who else? Shoot, I, Denzel Washington, Spike Lee, worked with all, a lot of people. Wow. Yeah. Someone wants to know Indica or Sativa. Probably after your your nights and the more hardcore days, you'd need the uh, Indica, right? Well, my, my 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 either one, man, either one. I I would I had the mentality. See, it's, it's different now. The Indica and the uh, Sabata, um, the, it, it, it it's different now because uh, people won't do anything after they smoke. See, we had the we were going to lift weights. We 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 play basketball. We'd go swimming. Uh, we'd drink, get drunk, and, and go. You know, when I was growing up, and yeah. they do it now. I don't. When they when they started bringing out this this stuff about indica and all this, we didn't care about that. <laughs> yeah, whatever they put in front of you, you're gonna have smoke. Hey, it better be good. It better not be no bammer. You know what I'm saying? Shoot, that's all we that's all we was caring about. Exactly. Uh, someone, well, could you uh, tell us one more crazy New Jack story? I won't bother you too much more tonight, but uh, lots of fans on here asking about New Jack. No, that's all right, man. You can ask them, uh, you know, whatever we got the time. Well, the the, the, the one I remember was uh, uh, Jack uh, was, uh, 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 we was in uh, New York, and Jack had, uh, he had some uh, warrants. In New York, he he wasn't supposed to be in New York, so uh, I was getting dressed and everything. And I said, "Man, where's Jack at?" He said, uh, uh, "One of the guys that, that's in the streets with him, hang out with him a little bit." He said, "Yeah, he in a little trouble, man. He got to come in here and do the match, and then he got to get the hell up out of New York." I said, "Oh, okay." <laughs> so I was used to it. So we we ran in there, and he said, "Mustafa, you ready?" I said, "Let's go." And then the music played, and we went out there. And did our show, went through the crowd, tearing up the place. And it was pretty packed, man. It was, it was about four or five hundred people. It was pretty packed. And we we did what we did. He he said, stuff I see you on the next uh, see you in the next town. <laughs> and then he jumped in the car and he left. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it was a trip how he did. He came right in. I didn't I didn't think he was gonna show up. And then he when the right when the match was ready, he just got his stuff on, ready to go. Let's go. You know, ran out to the match and did what we did. That's awesome. Right. Someone wants to know if you have any stories about the Elks Lodge in Queens. Well, I remember that I was not sober 
that I was there. I can tell you that. I was definitely not so. Uh, it was a good place um, and everything. Um, but uh, some places, I, I try to tell people, you know, I, I sometimes I, I think I can tell you a story, but a lot of times I don't remember until right till I get to the match. And then I say, okay, I got to take care of the boys. I can't be breaking nobody up. So let's not get too uh, toe up here. You know what I'm saying? So, but the, I, I would tell people again and again, there were a lot of times I was never sober uh, going to a lot of these places. Did you get along with Raven? Yes. Yeah, Raven, he's a little bit out there now. Okay. <laughs> he's a little bit out there. He'll go in them little spaces. they will be like, Okay, Raven, come back. Come back, Raven. Come back. <laughs> yeah. And then he'd come bring his feet back on the ground. But uh, yeah, he, he was cool. He was cool. Do you remember Chubby Dudley? Chubby Dudley. One of the one of the Dudley, one of the lesser known ones. Yeah, yeah I remember uh, 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 at one time they had a bunch of them. Man, they had, they had so many Dudleys one time. Uh, Big Dick was uh, my boy, though. At all, oh, yeah. yeah. Big Dig was uh, he died, you know, he died uh, early, but uh, you know, he's pretty rough on the uh, you know, we was out there, shit, so uh, but he, he, he was my, he was the coolest one, I I, I thought. And then, you know, I, I don't I don't have no nothing against Devon and 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 Bubba, but we didn't really we didn't party like that, you know, like me and Big Dig did. No, yeah, they they seem a little more uptight. Well, they, 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 yeah, and, 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 and uh, sometimes rightfully so, but I, that's just not my personality, you know, my personality, I talk to the ring people, I talk to the merch people, uh, I, I talk to everybody, man, I party with everybody, you know what I'm saying, and uh, I, I just uh, made sure that everybody felt comfortable uh around me not because i wanted them to and all that i just that's that's was my personality i got it from my dad he was he talked he talked to everybody there's a fan on here that wants to know your thoughts on the passing of kamala and viscera kamala was a great guy uh who i met i actually wrestled kamala before and interviewed him that he man he was a good worker Definitely good work and drew a lot of money. But the, the thing about it is they, they cut him short, man. You know, the, the people, a lot of people were coming to see Kamala too now. You know, and then uh, he gets short end of the stick on, on, on the money. He was drawing a lot of money, man. And that gimmick, you know, you can't fight it. The, the, I know the NAACP was on me, on us, as the gangsters, especially the ones in Tennessee. And then uh, you know when Kamala probably did that, he probably got heat from that. But he he, he was a great worker, and, and Viscera he was just cool people. He was a quiet guy, kind of kind of quiet around me, around me. But we we he was all right. He was cool too. Yeah, the uh, the Kamala gimmick. I mean, some people say it's racist, but it was over, and and it was scary as a kid. I remember being scared of him actually. Well, I'm gonna tell you what. If you go in these real jungles, go over to New Guinea and see what. <laughs> yeah, they still yeah, get... yeah. There's videos of it out there. Right. They eat you, okay? <laughs> Shoot. So I thought the gimmick was real. Somebody wants to know, and I already, I think it's Stan Hansen is the answer. But as an enhancement worker, did you have a favorite match? Um. Yeah, it's so many though, man. I don't even want to. I can't really pinpoint, but um, I know that the rock and roll, uh, going against the rock and roll, was uh, I thought the most fun because they 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 taught us how to work up Smoky Mountain. Uh, the guys up there, Jim Corden and those guys. See, these guys got so many opinions about other people that I don't get caught up in all that. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I, I, whether if they like me or not, I don't care. I don't care if they did or not. As long as I drew my money and paid my bills, do what I had to do, uh, I, I, it didn't matter. But it was a pub, uh, not a public game, but it was a the Rock and Roll Express. They would okay. we learn so much from them, uh, and they still can work because they taught us how to work and uh, uh, not be so stiff and how to take care of people. 
and, and you know and draw money and draw money you know some someone wants to know hypothetically what would you and new jack have done if jbl had tried to to bully you like i guess they did to blue meanie at the at the one night stand that i guess you guys weren't invited to that day well yeah <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that would have been interesting yeah it, 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 it's not that i'm the most toughest guy in the world i'm definitely uh not you know what i'm saying but we would have fought we would have fought yeah, it would definitely have been a fight if it would have went that way. Whether winning or losing, who cares? It would have we would have fought. You know. What well, I mean? it was the ECW guy Joey Styles that ultimately uh, knocked out JBL. I think on a on a tour overseas. Did you ever hear that story? I hear about that story. I guess he was picking on Joey Styles, and Joey Styles supposedly knocked him out. <laughs> the, uh, and see, I, I I don't know, but I did know that when they tried to do that King of the Ring kind of thing yeah. uh, at the time, and I said, um, I knew I knew Tuco would be able to take care of himself when he got when he was doing it. But I said, hey guys, this is a different deal now, okay? Uh, and so some of them found out the hard way. What did you think of Shane Douglas? I, man, I, I I like man. If if Shane could calm down on his ego, man, you know, on on, on things, man, you know, what I'm saying uh, that was the part that uh, when you when you when you working with people, it's an ego thing that kicks in. You know, it's it's an ego thing that that kicks in, and you got to know when to snub it out the way. You know, uh, and things, and, and he, he has some, he has some heat with some people. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but but overall, I have nothing personal against uh, Shane. I like him. He, was cool. he told a story to me that a lot of people question if it's true or not. I I think it could be, right. but he said Scott Hall and just just incredible had brought Scott Hall to an ECW show in Florida, right. when Scott was with WCW. Right, he was off. Were you there for that? Where there was, he says there was a confrontation. We did a tour. We did a tour in in, in Florida, uh, but I had my own crowd that I hung around with, so I didn't know too much about. Shane was a little secretive about certain things, so um, I had my little crowd. So it, I'm I'm pretty sure that it, I, I remember when um, uh, just incredible, but I, you know, the part about Scott Hall, I don't think I was there for that one. Okay, okay, yeah. He claimed that he have... stood up to Scott Hall and challenged him to a fight. But really and, fight. He, and and Scott Hall left. Yeah. But uh I mean if it was at an ECW show, I wouldn't blame Scott Hall. I wouldn't get in a fight with in enemy territory either, but uh I don't I don't know. There's there's people that question that. Yeah, uh sometimes uh, you know, like I said, uh stories get uh, blow it out of proportion. I don't know uh, if that's uh, true or not on that one, because like th this one, I, you, you you know how we do. You we get our own crowd. You know, yeah. I, pit bulls and different people as I was uh, coming up, and we we I didn't hang around certain people that if they wasn't I'm gonna keep it real. If they wasn't drunks and uh, drug addicts uh, that was like me, if that <laughs> if yeah. too much hang around, and you know what I'm saying, so. Yeah, exactly. Well, speaking of drunks and drug addicts, Just Incredible is still there from the last time I wrestled him. Yeah. Uh, hopefully he gets out of that soon. But, yeah, he, he actually uh, changed the finish on a match with me. So I lost all respect for him for that. Oh, I mean, while you while you was in the ring, he changed Yeah. It. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I, I, yeah, after I had told him that uh, not to worry about the money, the extra money that I, I had given him to pay for something, uh, because I knew that he was on hard times and then, but whatever. Right, Addiction right. is a bad thing, as we all know. So uh, I, I wish him luck, but I I still hold a grudge against him for that. Well, you know, um, the, the 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 thing about it is, uh, with Justin Incredible. 
uh, hopefully get it. You know, uh, I don't know. I haven't talked to him. I talked to him the last time, and he was all, he seemed all right then. But you know, either it's gonna take you out, or you know, before your time. I mean, I'm saying uh, uh, either it's gonna take you out, or you're gonna uh, conquer it. This is how it yeah. goes. Yeah. Well, he's still alive, so that that's a good. The good yeah. thing about WWE uh, rehab, though, is they pay for it, so it's not like a normal person that would have to pay out of their own pocket. But I understand he's got a family and stuff too. Well, the, the, the thing about it is uh, rehab centers, I have nothing against them because a lot of people have went to them and became successful when they came out of them. But they baby you, man. They have, sometimes they baby you too much. You need somebody to tell you like it is. You know, there's like I heard of Mike Tyson on the hot boxing, you know what I'm saying? So I heard him say it was a guy that was there that, that told him like it is and said, hey, man, come on now. Uh, let's, let's, let's straighten yourself out because you got too much to, to give to the to the world. It, it, you can't go out like this, you know. So that was the same thing with me. I had to do it by myself because you know, man, rehab center is expensive, man. Yeah, <laughs> you got you got to be uh, to take the time off work, and I think it's like even for a, not a great one, it's like ten thousand a month. <laughs> so, like, who's going to be able to afford? <laughs> That's right, I'm especially you... if they have drug problems or alcohol problems, right? <laughs> That's so me up with cost of the price, you know. Yeah, there you go. Well, I'm glad to see you're alive and doing well for yourself. And, and I thank you for, for being so generous with your time tonight. I mean, thank you, man. Uh, you, you know, we're gonna always gonna keep in contact, even when we're not on the show anyway. Oh, yeah, check up on you and see how you're doing and stuff like that. Uh, you know, like I said before, regardless of what people think of, of us or anything like that, cool. <laughs> you know, that's all I can say about it. Cool. We're going to be all right. Because cause, uh, I, I know that I have no grudges. Uh, I went through some stuff with people in, uh, in the business and uh, I have no grudges on them. And, and I'm not trying to say I'm a uh, goody two shoes. Or, I'm not no do gooder. I can tell you that right now. But, but you know, the thing about it is, uh, I know that uh, that if that's how they feel, that's how they feel, and and I'm not. If they can take out 24 hours, uh, uh, that I get on their nerves like that. Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you. There you go, and congratulations to your daughter who's uh, in the Navy now. Yeah, man, she's doing a thing. That's awesome. Yeah, and people that uh, they can find you on Facebook if if they want to look you up. Do you have any other social media? I'm basically doing right now. I'm basically doing SPW uh, in in Sacramento. That's the show where I do, and uh, that's the one that I chose to uh, kind of uh, stick it out with to the casket drop. So awesome well best of luck with that and yeah definitely stay in contact and i'll let you say whatever you want to the fans well uh, well you tell them uh, you tell them don't let nobody stop your dreams uh from happening you know you follow through yeah it's gonna be a struggle either way so go on and struggle on and you gotta you gotta embrace what sucks because that's the part that's gonna get you through it and that's how you're gonna make it in life so embrace it if it hurts go for it you know what I'm saying? Because eventually you're going to have smiles at the end of the game. It's all about smiles and frowns. So uh, it's about, the, you know, you're going to frown up a few times, but it's also going to be some smiles right after that. So that's how it goes. Stick Thank you it. for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Follow us on 